Yeah. Oh. So app parallel hacking, I gotta I got ask, what is really app parallel hacking? There's so much stuff to talk about. I've been I've been doing it since I don't know, probably ten years. And app parallel hacking for me is everything from uh, yeah, sneaking away in the lounge, getting free food in the lounge if you want to. It's probably not what I need to do because I'm trying to get lounge access anyway. But it's also like if you're getting a certain seat on the airplane, which is usually better than other seats, and on some seats you can actually like physically hack the seat, and uh, even if Lufthansa doesn't sell you a fully flat bed, you can uh, yeah work around your way on, on the seat, just like put a couple of levers, and suddenly it turns into a fully flat bed if you know what kind of seat it is. So that's also air travel hacking. Then there's uh, frequent flyer miles, lots and lots of stuff you can do with frequent flyer miles. Um, I'm doing it, but I'm not doing it to the same level that some other guys are doing it that I know that is like buying money, uh, buying miles for money and then just redeeming ridiculous awards, which is really fun in, in business and first class, because usually in business and first class you get more bang for your, for your buck if you're doing that instead of compared to the economy. Um, then there's credit card churning, which is essentially mostly done in the US, where you get, uh, when you sign up for a credit card, you get a couple of gifts. Like, even in, in Germany, every euro I spend, I get a mile from my free fire, my free fire program. Lufthansa miles and more kind of stuff. In the US, when you sign up for a credit card, sometimes you get 50,000 miles. Uh, you do that twice, and suddenly you have a free ticket, business class, US to Europe and back. <laughs> so just for signing up for a free credit card, sometimes there's some, some deals involved, you have to spend some money, that kind of stuff. And then you have to like terminate the contract, and then there's like people that are doing like 10, 15 credit cards at the same time. <laughs> and what you make the credit cards go. So that's not what I'm gonna talk about. But I'm more gonna talk about um, yeah, finding cheap fares, uh, how to yeah, get around, uh, getting on a flight, but not paying as much as the airlines probably wanted to pay for the flight, and in general just like finding cheaper fares. A uh, bit about myself. Um, I've done voice over IP stuff since uh, 2003. Um, built uh, Freenet.de, the, uh, the voice over IP service that we had there. Uh, was was pretty nice. Now I'm working uh, since almost two years with a small startup in Hamburg doing uh, quality management for voice over IP. Looking at all those nice kind of small RTP packets, like big 10 million packets a second. You build RTP streams, do quality assessment, and uh, try to sell that to tier one carriers, which is Apparently working pretty well fast right now. Uh, in my spare time, I'm a travel addict, so um, I should have updated this because now I'm more close to like 600 flights and 29 nine times around the globe. Um, right, I'm doing like more than 100 flights a, a year. Um, only been denied entry to the US once, which is uh, kind of nice. But I've done trips like uh, Hamburg to New York uh, on Saturday and back on Sunday, back into work Monday morning. No question asked. I'm doing that. If you want to see the flight maps, open flights are it's a pretty nice tool. Just like graphs, statistics on, on where you're actually flying. So that's, uh, I'm an addict. Um, as I said, airfare, how do we actually build an airfare? Like if, if an airline announces they're going to make a sale, uh, what kind of rules are involved? How do we make the fare? How can we figure out, can I actually book this stuff? Uh, that kind of thing. How do the uh, reservation systems work? Uh, how do we find bugs? And then I'm just going to show one interesting bug, which is usually dubbed the fuel dump, or sometimes the air fare. Um, should you have any point in the, during the presentation, have any questions, just pretty much ask, uh, throw stuff at me, I don't care. Um, <laughs> we have the time, I'm going to take more than now because I have 73 slides. Oh, you already have? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you should throw stuff. So. No. I gotta I gotta make the marshmallows because before you start throwing bottles or anything, you better throw marshmallows. <laughs> Even though they are pink and they might look kind of funny on the video afterwards. Um, okay, so introduction. Um, first of all, we have service classes. That's the kind of stuff you know. Economy, business first. Sometimes you have like products in the middle. That's essentially what's marketed to you as a customer. But internally, you have booking classes. It's dirt cheap economy, flexible economy, and all those different booking classes. Um, have different names. In general, F is for first class, C for business class, Y for like for full, full fair economy, M is like also used for economy most of the time, but essentially the, the entire alphabet is used for different booking classes. Uh, sometimes you can see stuff, if you for instance go on united.com, you can see this, and it kind of gives you an overview on how booked a certain flight is, and if you're trying to book a cheap ticket, you're looking like for towards the right end, if, if there are more seats available, if the, uh, the numbers are higher, this means there's nine, nine seats available in full fare first class, so if you're willing out dish, uh, dish out lots of lots of money, you can definitely get a seat in first class, uh, like discounted 
first class, if this was, for instance, like Lufthansa United, uh, there's only four seats available. They're, they're not selling nine seats here just because they believe um, they just have to sell four seats on, on the discounted first class and they would still be able to sell more expensive seats in first class. So they don't want customers to just grab the cheap seats and then fly the plane around all cheap seats. They want to make money. That's where they have, diff where they have different prices. Um, interesting to know when we're coming through the fare basis later, the first character of the fare basis always represents this, which is nice because if you have a fare basis and somebody just mess messes up the first character, suddenly you get bumped from economy to first class if it happens. <laughs> Can happen and it actually does happen. Um, more terminology, I'm going to use this throughout the presentation a couple of times. Uh, operating <coughs> carrier, marketing carrier, that kind of thing. Um, operating carrier, obviously, Lufthansa owns a plane, they sell you a ticket on that plane, and they're actually operating the flight. Then it could be a marketing carrier. Um, for instance, if you're looking at KLM, they have like KLM City Hopper, the, uh, the smaller planes connecting all the uh, smaller airports like Amsterdam or Paris. And um, it's a regional partner, sometimes outsourced, different country for different regulations, different uh, wages, like um, Lufthansa had a carry in Italy because it's way cheaper to operate out of Italy than it is to pay some, some German uh, wages. Uh, but still, it's uh, marketed by KLM, but it's somewhat like a different airlines, KLM City Hopper, Lufthansa, like Lufthansa Regional, Lufthansa or Augsburg Airways, somewhere. there's dozens and dozens of small airlines, but essentially they're all the same airline. Um, then we also have co share flights um, on the uh, transatlantic market, for instance, the, uh, the Star Lines, which is like the alliance of, of United, Air Canada, US Airways, Lufthansa. Um, they are all selling seats on their system for the other airlines as well. So there's like 10 different flights a day between like Frankfurt and, and uh, Chicago. And if, if you go to the Lufthansa side, you don't only just see the uh, Lufthansa flights. But you also see the United flights, and you can also, if the, if the flight times are more convenient to you, just get on that United flight. And usually Lufthansa would sell it as a Lufthansa flight, but in reality it's a United plane that's actually a United crew, but they're just marketing as, as a code share flight. Um, then we also have terms like plating, issuing, validating carrier. Um, if you have a ticket, for instance, with United and Lufthansa on the same ticket, uh, one of those carriers actually has to issue the ticket, the, the, what used to be the paper ticket and what now is like the electronic ticket you have. Um, apply all the rules, collect all the, all the, the, the fares, the uh, surcharges and everything. They have to have one carrier issuing the ticket and that's usually called the validating carrier because that carrier makes sure that you actually comply with all the rules and is also plating the ticket on what's called the ticket stock. Um, ticket stock is like the ticket number you have, it's like I don't know, 12 characters, uh, digits or something, and they have a uh, prefix, uh, three digits. United, for instance, is uh, 16, American Airlines is one, uh, Lufthansa is 220, and if you just look at the ticket number, you can see on which carrier's ticket plate the ticket will issue, who's, who actually look at all the rules and, and make sure that the, uh, the ticket is as well. Um, if you now look at one of those tickets, just a random ticket, uh, you can, yeah, Looks like it's actually looked on the flight uh, out of Hamburg, flight number one, which is always nice. Um, <laughs> unless you look at the boarding time, 5.45. But this morning was 5.15, so it's even more. But it's a Lufthansa flight. You see Lufthansa flight number one, but it's ticketed on United ticket stock. So I bought a ticket probably on the United website, but it contained a Lufthansa flight that will probably continue on to the US or something. Uh, and it also shows the booking class. I mean, it's economy and it's booking class S, which is one of the uh, cheapest booking classes at that time you, you could get. And they also show, oh, the same flight that I'm on is also marketed and it, as a code share on United with some random flight number. Um, this, lots of people are asking like, what the other numbers are. Uh, usually in the upper right corner somewhere you have what's called the uh, sequence number. Um, I was the uh, third guy to actually check in for that flight. Usually you only get those low numbers if you're checking in like 24 hours advance, when, when just when the flight opens up for, for check-in online. Um, if you go to the airport like an hour before the flight and you suddenly see a number like 250 there, you know, 250 people already signed up for that flight. If you see the plane only has 200, 200 seats, you know, oh, there's going to be lots of fun. I mean, if you have status, you can hope for an upgrade. Um, you can also go directly to the car and say, do you need volunteers to take a different flight? I'm happy to 
take 600 euros just to be somewhere as a day later if you're going back from vacation. I mean, I don't mind spending another day in vacation and earn money for that. Uh, it's interesting to look at the number. If it's just like in the 60s, 80s range, most of the time, the plane it doesn't indicate that the plane is full, but sometimes if the, if the number is really, really high, uh, stuff happens, yeah. So would you recommend arriving just an, a minute before the official uh, last moment to, to book your flight? Because the chances would be bigger that, that it's overbooked and they need to offer you uh, an alternative? To um, you you don't, probably don't need booking, but like checking in for yeah, the flight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, probably, it probably doesn't apply because there's now really strict rules about who's getting the upgrade and who's offered. Like, um, this shows, for instance, senator status, so which is like the uh, second highest, or this, the, the highest star line status, but the second highest in Lufthansa. Um, but usually, that, that's a pretty good chance, depending on the booking class, to get an upgrade. And if you don't have any, any status and you show up late, you might just end up getting like the crappy middle seat in the back. So um, you should at least try to get a seat as soon as possible. And sometimes I'm gambling. I've, I've been pretty lucky gambling, just like uh, canceling my check-in if I see that every single seat is taken. And then just show up and say, oh, I want a seat, and there's no seat. I can show you the tickets later, but you can see how the process actually works. Um, if you don't have status, um, chances are probably higher that you actually get bumped off the flight because they claim, oh, you've been here too late. Even if it's just a minute if they tell you you've been too late, then it's, it's actually your problem because you didn't show up for the flight, as, as far as their opinion goes. So they just give you give that, uh, your seat away. So if you have status, then it might be useful to turn up in the last minute before the official time. Um, there are some, um, usually if you're looking at like um, <coughs> domestic flights, often it says, it doesn't, doesn't change on, on this ticket, but it says something like, oh, okay, you have to be at the airport, you have to check in 45 minutes before the flight. Because what happens is, uh, especially if you're talking about a remote station where you only have like limited crew doing check-in, and it's the same crew that does check-in where they take your luggage, check you in first, and they also, the same agents also, also show up at the gate. Mm -hmm. And um, essentially the, uh, the flight moves from, from this regular just check-in procedure to what's called usually gate control, where you have like flight manager and one, two, one or two agents working the, uh, the check-in or the, uh, the, the gate, and um, they can do whatever they want. They are, they are moving people around that they have to, uh, they are bumping people, and... Um, yeah, be nice to them. Yeah, being nice to them sometimes helps, and sometimes just like, okay, just leave you the information here and yeah, do whatever you want to do, and sometimes you just get lucky. I mean, I, I usually don't try to press my luck on just getting upgrades. But I've been pretty successful last year getting upgrades anyway, so. <laughs> okay, this is a different ticket. It's on, on United Paper. It's just, just because it's United Paper and the background doesn't say anything about how or why or where I booked it. Uh, in this case, um, that's my frequent flight number here, so that's not the, uh, that's the uh, ticket stock. It's again United, and it actually says coupon number four, so that's the uh, fourth flight on that ticket, because the ticket can have like up to 16 different flights or something. It's multiple, um, that's the, uh, the PNR, um, personal name record. You can just look up your, your entire itinerary and everything. Uh, also, it's like, yeah, again, it's Chicago to Minneapolis. Uh, First class for whatever reason, um, and like senator status maps to LH star G, which is like star lines gold, maps the system. So just like random whatever information, whatever I mean, boarding starts seven thirty four. That's whoever wants to come up with that idea. Well, seven thirty or seven thirty five, but not seven thirty four. <laughs>